Hey guys, uh, welcome to this video. Um, we're going to be installing our uh, Let's Encrypt SSL cert on our Microsoft today. If you're not aware, Let's Encrypt is a, uh, a free SSL certificate service. It runs on over 600 million websites, as you can see there. And it's basically uh, a way of uh, small websites and providers to have uh, the security of SSL between their web server and their client. Um, it's now available uh, or has been available for a while um, to install via the command line on the Microtik so you don't have to actually go away and uh, download and create your certificate separately and then install it on it. it can be all done here and again I've got this guide which steps you through all of this um, which we can uh, I'll link in the description below but before we get on with this tutorial um, I just want to say a big thanks to our, our sponsor, our Admiral Platform. Um, if you're managing Microsoft routers, switches, all sorts of wireless devices, uh, then I really recommend AdmiralPlatform.com. It's a powerful cloud-based platform built uh, specifically to monitor, to manage and maintain your Microsoft fleet uh, in a simple and easy to use dashboard. So with Admiral, you get a real-time performance monitoring, automated backups, firmware management, and even remote access tools. They're all designed to save you time and uh, reduce your headaches. So whether you're managing devices for clients, you're an ISP or just your own network, Admiral gives you the visibility to control um, that you need without in the complexity. So no more jumping between Winsbox sessions and writing custom scripts. Admiral will do all the heavy lifting for you. So check out admiralplatform.com. I do want to check it out. Make sure that when you do sign up, if you put in uh, under the referral email, if you put my email in hello at microtickmasters.com, um, they will give you a second month for free. So they'll basically credit you back your um, your 7660 uh, US dollars, and then you'll get your second month free. Also, if you'd like a bit more information, I um, recently made this review video. Um, where I got to use the platform for real and add some devices and basically went through that whole setup. So I'll show you how easy it was. So again, there's a link for this in the description below if you want to check that out. Okay, let's get back to the tutorial. The router I'm going to use is my CHR, which is in AWS. Um, it has a public IP address, although it would appear that we only have an internal one on the LAN. But with AWS, what's happening is it's basically one-to-one -one NAT so anything destined for this IP is just um, natted to this IP here. So it's as if this IP was on, on the device itself. So if you do have a uh, an internet connection that provides you with a dynamic IP address, that uh, router which is providing that will need to then port forward the relevant ports, which I'll go through when we uh, set up the firewall side of it. Um, which we'll actually start with first. So. I've got my basic firewall set up here. Um, anything that's allowed, I've got this allow list here, which is just my connection so I can re remotely access it. And then everything else is uh, basically being dropped that isn't established or related traffic. Okay, so we need to allow 443 primarily for the um, Let's Encrypt server to provide us with it to basically check our um, SSL certificate is valid based on the IP address um, and also the uh, we need port 80 as well for HTTP so what it's going to do is we're going to request a certificate the, the server the other end is going to confirm that the IP address that we're accessing from and that domain name that we want to um, associate the certificate with is valid and then it will provide us with a certificate if you don't have these firewall rules open then it will um, uh, it won't respond it won't give you a certificate basically the other thing we'll need to do is if it's not or if you haven't got it enabled already is under IP services. We just need to make sure we've got port 80 and 443 enabled. OK, um, this is basically for webfig. But what will the use of this uh, SSL cert is for going to be used for? Um, well, we'll demonstrate using the webfig itself, but you can also use it if you've set up a hotspot and you want to have your clients hit a HTTPS um, login page 
for security and also you know client to, for your client to trust that the hotspot's valid um and you can also use it for an SSTP server if you're running that. Both I've, got, I've done both videos using these as well, so I'll link those in the description below if you're interested in either of those. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to allow um, on our input chain, so and this is destined for the router itself. Um, protocol is going to be TCP, and the destination port is going to be 443, so HTTPS, and that's coming in from our Ether1. And we're going to accept that. And then we're going to do the same for, again, input chain. Uh, we want to come from uh, port 80 this time, in from ether1, and again, accept. Now, we just need to make sure that these are currently below the, the uh, explicit deny, the drop rule, so we just need to drag those above. Okay, now we can go ahead and we're going to leave that there because I'm going to come back to the firewall bit in a minute. We, uh, I'm going to do it in two ways. I'm going to request two certificates. One is going to be using the IP cloud, which if you're not familiar is the dynamic DNS, DDNS service within Microtik. So when we enable that, apply, it gives us this um, unique host name that we can use. So if you don't own a domain or your domain is, um, your IP address isn't static and it's going to change then you can use this service and basically means that when this IP address changes, it updates this record. So that's your kind of source of truth. Um, you can do it with other external providers such as Cloudflare, and I've done a video on that as well, um, which I'll link in the description, to uh, basically when this changes, it will update that one and then you can use that DNS name as well. So I've done that one, we'll use this one for, for one of the, um, so I'll keep that open because I need to remember what this is. So that we'll do one for this one, and also I've got a, um, and I've also created a um, an A record on my domain, which I'll just show you. Uh, chr.microtikmasters.com. Okay, so that now resolves to uh, RIP here, so we can use this one as well. So we're going to create a certificate for both of these. So first thing we'll do is for the, the dynamic DNS one. So we go to open up the terminal. There we go. Uh, certificate. We do enable SSL cert and we give it the DNS name. Now, if you are using a CHR like myself, um, just word of warning, you need a valid license, which is a perpetual license. That's a one-off. But whether it's in AWS or on your own VM hardware um, for this service to work. So if you are trying to do this and you've got this enabled, it'll work when you, you enable the, f the free two-week trial. But once that expires, you'll be dropped A down to 10 megabits, I think, per second. And also, this service won't be uh, working. Just but If you've got your, your home router, your HAP, AX, or whatever you're using, uh, or larger device, then th that license is built into the hardware itself. So just because I'm using a free service. So now it's going to go ahead and connect. It's going to request a certificate. It's going to validate it all. This takes a few seconds. There we go. And we've got a update certificate. So if we go into our certificate repository, we can see there it's giving us our certificate for that domain. Okay, there we go. So now when we go to our um, IP services again, it will automatically update this for you normally, but our SSL cert, now we can specify which certificate we want. And now this certificate, as I mentioned, also be used for our, our hotspot configuration, or if you're using SSTP VPN server, which uses um, SSL as its um, communication encryption. Um, so yeah, there's our SSL cert. Now let's just go ahead and uh, confirm that working. We can go to that domain. There we go. So there's my win box, uh, web fix, sorry. It says we are secure. And if we look at the certificate, there we go, it's our Let's Encrypt certificate. Okay, there we go. Now, if you look here, the day's valid, 89. So you get 90 days effectively. Um, 
for this certificate. Now, if you were to run this on your, um, when you install this on your, say, Ubuntu server, if you're using that as your web server, then that will also, when you run the, um, basically it runs a script which will include a cron job, so a, a, a task that's going to run every, I think it's 30 days. I think within 30 days of its expiry, or maybe 20, is when you're allowed to renew it again. Uh, it'll run a script basically to renew this for you. So we're going to basically do the same for here. But I don't want to have 443 and 80 open to the internet because it's a router at the end of the day. If this was a web server, then that would be different. However, I don't want to access this remotely. Um, if this was uh, an, in we were going to use this for internal service like um, a hotspot or something like that, then you wouldn't necessarily want this open to the internet anyway. So what I'm going to show you now is this step is, is not required, but it's just something nice to, to have. Um, because when we actually want to renew this using our script and our scheduler, I want to actually enable and disable these rules at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and comment them and just call them let's uh, encrypt. And do the same for the other rule. Okay. Now we can go ahead and uh, create our script. So we go system scripts. <laughs> Now we go. So IP, if you're not familiar with um, scripts, basically a bunch of commands in a, in a very, um, the loosest term is just a bunch of commands we can stick in here and it will just run those for us. If you're not familiar what commands to use, open up your terminal and there's basically you can do question mark tab if you're not sure. So we're going to go um, IP and then firewall and then filter, as you can see. So it basically works the same as that. So IP space firewall space filter okay by default it puts these forward slashes in and it, it groups them it um you can just write straight after it such as uh print that's uh, a newer feature than it used to be um but i just like to put the spaces in instead because it's easier to see um so as you can see these are the rules here which match up here so we want to basically um the first thing we're going to do is we're going to enable the rule when it comes to uh, running the scripts. We want to enable it because we're going to disable them afterwards. And then we're going to do that based on the um, comment we just added. So you do square bracket and then you do find comment equals and then you just stick in that comment. Let's encrypt. So it matches the comments. So it's going to be any rule that has that comment is going to apply this command to. And then close square brackets to enable, but they're already enabled. So if we did the same this time, but disabled, see, it turns them off. And we do enable again, turns back on. So we're going to use these rules. So first thing we're going to do is we'll go ahead and disable these. We will copy and paste that into here. It's best to start with a forward slash for a new line just to make sure it runs properly. And then we'll add the disabled one in. Also, I like to, if I'm doing lots of larger scripting, as you can see, my map, my cursor suddenly disappeared. So I have to move it again to get it back. Um, it's just a, a feature when you're typing stuff in here, it disappears can be a bit annoying so I tend to do this all in a notepad somewhere and then copy and paste it across but again just a little personal preference now in between these we want to run that um, command we initially did for the um, host name so it was uh, certificate in fact I'll do that in here just so we don't get any uh, typos certificate um, it's exactly the same as we were doing if it was a brand new certificate enable and then DNS name we specify our uh, IP uh, cloud one paste so we just copy that one there we go so now it's going to Enable them, renew the certificate, and then disable them again. So we can apply that. 
can run that script. So the first thing it does enables them. And then it's going to go ahead and uh, renew our certificate mm, system certificates, which actually won't change because we're still in 90 days, but then the rules have been disabled. So it won't pass on to the next line until it's successful and won. So it's successfully got the certificates. Now it's disabled the rules. There we go. So now what we do is we'll just call this uh, let's encrypt. Okay. And then we go to our system scheduler. We have a new one. We'll call this schedule. Let's encrypt. Now here we could have put those same lines we put in the script. I like to have them separately just because it's a um, just so we can run the script separately. Let's encrypt. Okay, let's make sure we've spelled that correctly. No, I haven't. There we go. So the best way to do it actually is just a system scripts so open that up again. We'll just copy that name. In fact, I don't like to use spaces either. There we go. Copy that. Then in the scheduler, we can put that in there. I should specify the actual interval. Now we're going to want this to run every, um, that so renews every 90 days. So we'll do it every, say, 90, uh, 80, sorry, 90, 87. And then just put a, a little D for day. So you've got days now, hours, minutes, seconds. We apply that. Okay, so now that's going to run every uh, every ninety days, and renew us. Oh, sorry, every eighty-seven days. So before our ninety-day expiry, and renew our certificate. Now I mentioned before as well about the other uh, SSL cert I've got. So um, to do that, let's just enable these rules again. We can go ahead and do exactly the same thing. So certificate enable. DNS, and then it was chr.microtickmasters.com. Run that, and basically what it's going to do is it's going to do exactly the same process, but um, we're going to overwrite our uh, system certificates. Overwrite our, there we go, it's already done it. Basically, update our host name now. So now we can go to yeah, and then so they're using this one. We do chr.microtickmasters.com. Yeah, same thing. We got a certificate. So yeah, two ways of doing it. If you wanted to use your own, um, doesn't update the name actually. Just updates the uh, the DNS entry for you. Um, as you can see there, that's based off that certificate name there, not the actual host name, but you can change that to whatever you like if you want to. Just disable these. And then if you do change, if you do whatever you change, just make sure you update that in your um, your script to reflect that other DNS name there. So yeah, hopefully that's uh, been clear enough. Um, you know, it's all free. It's all uh, works pretty well. I think we've got some use cases if you need an SSL cert so you haven't got to go out and spend one buy one uh, worry about downloading one and installing it you've got it all done for you so yeah any questions please uh, comment below if not I'll see you on the next one thanks <laughs>